because they are our role models. They are flagpoles. Every time you look at their life, his mother was from Africa, Salil. Some historians say her name was Salil. And she was a pious lady. Allah didn't put, pick an Arab or Sayyid or Qureshi or Hashimi or this, pick somebody from just like Hajar. Allah looked at the whole universe and said, okay, all the earth and say, I'm going to select a woman and that woman will be a black woman and she, and she will marry to my friend, Ibrahim. When Allah chooses, you must find out. Do not make distinction because we are not capable of understanding that distinction. He makes distinction, honor that. So the, 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 the role of every mother, of course, say the Fatima to Zahra is way above everybody. <laughs> Each Imam's mother had a quality. They had to bear a child, a future Imam, a Masoom. Remember that. Allah is not going to put Masoom in the, in the womb of a Kafir, a Mushrik, or whatever. That means selection process has to be beyond color, race, religion, language, or and all Imams had shown that way, one by one by one by one by one. This Imam had given us many, many manifestations. Whatever. Salat ala Muhammad ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ala Muhammad. If you look at the life of every Imam, they said whatever we have is from where coming from? Father to father to father to father to Hassan to, to Hussein to Hassan to Ali to Rasulullah. Yeah, that's a link. That's a golden link. No other religion has it. But there is Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, or, or, or you know, any one of those four schools. They do not have the link that we got it from our father and father and father. Direct link. This is Silsalat Dahab. So As Imam Askari alayhi salam, his noble character is very short. He was in turmoil. The Abbasids were just all around him. He, they couldn't move. They had their they had their guards all around them, checking them day and night, day and night. We are very fortunate. I consider myself to be a followers of Itna Ashari Imams because I studied each one of them. I studied each one of them. That's the way I became convinced. I looked at the life of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. The lesson learned from Karbala, I still am amazed. We don't talk about it here. What are the lessons learned by the women of Karbala? The mothers of Karbala, say the Zainab, the sister. We don't talk about that. We just take it for 40 days in Muharram and then the rest of the 11, 10 and a half months we forget. No. Their life should be a beacon. They are beacons of light for us. All one of them. And this is one of them, the 11th one. The important part of it is that from him and a, and a servant made from Africa, not a princess from anybody, Saudi Arabia or Iran or Pakistan or Afghanistan. No, a slave woman, Salil, joined them together and gave them a noble hujja will remain forever. And that's the value of Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam. I urge all of you, I urge myself, that to honor his name, get something from his life. One word. One word will do it for you. Believe me, it'll open up seeds. And that's why we need to focus and concentrate on the words of Quran and the words of Masumin. The rest are folk, okay, they're good. But when, when Quran speaks, pay attention. When Masum speaks, pay attention. And there is no shortage of books today, I'm telling you. Allama Bakr Qureshi, I think he may be dead, rahmatullah He has written books on every Masumin, the 14, very detailed, very detailed, authentic. Life of Imam Ali has got 1,000 pages. Sayyidah Fatima Zara, all authentic. He's quoting. Same thing with Imam Askari, he wrote a book on his life. So we are very fortunate today that we have access to everything. It is at our fingertips. Take as much as you want. Don't be too, just surrender. To, to get to the point of learning is very difficult. When you get Aranal Ashya Kamahiya, how is a thing created, then you know the, the truth. 
then you know the truth. Who splits the seed? Who clears the dawn in the air? We are looking at all this and we just go about our business marveling our cars and house and dresses and jewelries and shoes. I admire my shoes. My daughter bought them especially because they're very comfortable. But the whole universe is right there in front of me. And, and Allah says in the Quran that you do fikr on what? Nafs and ufaq. Sanurihim ayatana fil afaq wa anfusihim. Right? Only two dimensions outside and inside. That's what we need to do. And that's what we've been trying to discipline ourselves. When you come to this assembly, assembly of Islam, assembly of Ahlul Bayt, I love Ahlul Bayt. Why? Because they are the cream, cream de la cream. Every quotation from them, every aspect of their life is a beacon of light. Every aspect. Every aspect. We need to be able to understand the value of the ones you have. I don't know the full value, but I like to get some value. Salawat ala Muhammad ala Muhammad. The second part of the presentation today is continuing from last week. The word hikmah is very vast. I can only scratch the surface. I went through the whole Quran, word by word, ayah by ayah, verse by verse. Then I went into dictionary, I went into this, I went to this. Last week what I presented was, it was 17 points that Quran identified. Okay, there is no argument. When Quran speaks, all Muslims should accept. No argument. There's Allah's kalam. So seven. today what I'm doing is going one step back and trying to show you, in fact, what does the word wisdom means in general, in Christianity, in science, and in Islam. One word, hikmah. So, inshallah, as soon as he's ready, we'll continue with that. Salat ala Muhammad ala Muhammad. Allama Bakar Karashi. Karashi. He, Karashi, he's from India but settled in Iraq over the years. Yes. Okay. They call him Karashi by his Karashi, whatever you call it. Okay. There is an English version? Yes, all of them translated. Beautifully, I mean, it's, there is no reason for me, for anyone to say something is not available. Excessively available. Anything you want. Go to Al Islam. They got hundreds of books on every topic. Okay. Uh, do you need help, Hassan? Which one? The intro. The first one. This one? Yes. This is important that I find for me, learning is to go to the base. Always go to the base. Or basically, always go to the base. And that base will give you a sort of an opening of a, of a shoot coming out of the ground. Go on putting seeds in your heart and they will sprout, they'll, they'll develop. Okay, we're almost there. As soon as he finishes. Pardon me? Okay, got it. Here we go. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ala Muhammad. Brother, can you see? Brother, Abuel, can you see? Okay, because I do it here because I have to show this pointer. Please, brief one, I'll answer, detailed one later on. Pay very close, because this is really a piece of land you have in your heart. Hikmah. Treat it as a seed you're putting in your heart. Someone who has wisdom will follow every rule in Islam. I don't do that. Should I? Yes. That's wisdom. Not knowing is okay, but not wanting to know is worse. If it's important, I must know it. I know the rules of, the, uh, of Florida, driving, everything. Everything I know. But this is what he's saying that he, of someone who follows a rule in Islam, 
learn it. And I, I don't mean to... We have a sort of adab, a manner in the masjid. And I remind myself, when you enter the masjid, don't say salam alaikum very loud. Because one who's praying, he has to answer. He gets distracted. Suggestion is, keep quiet. Say it under the... So that he cannot hear it. The person who is praying. Okay, it's very important. These are the etiquettes that we must learn. These are the rules. Okay, he will uphold the truth. The Prophet Islam said, Allah has not distributed amongst human beings better than wisdom. The sleeping of a wise person is better than awakening of the ignorant. And this is a very famous hadith. If you are intelligent, you sleep and you get reward. If you are ignorant, your sleep has no meaning, you are sleeping like everybody else. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, No wealth is better than wisdom and no poverty is worse than ignorance. We should check ourselves with this. For things I don't know, I'm ignorant. And I am in many ways, but I keep trying to make an effort. What else do I have to learn? What else do I have to learn about my salat, about my zakat, about my khums, about my tahara, about my all the other things? Amal bin maru, nahin munkar, tawalla, tabarra, taqayya. No poverty is worse than ignorance in all affairs. No support is better than consultation and exchange of thought and wisdom shared with each other. If you learn something, it's an amana. Pass it on. The most valuable gift to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humanity will be presented in several sections. And this is a very vast subject. I just touched partially yesterday. I'm going back to the drawing board starting from stage 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So bear with me. This is going back now. Introductory. Section 1, Introduction of Wisdom, a general understanding of wisdom. Section 2, Characteristic of Wisdom in Islam. Do I have them? I don't even know them. What are the characteristics of a wise person? I don't know them. Does anybody know all of them? No. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are. I'm retired, so I can sit every morning, just look at the Quran and say, Okay, Kitab Allah, I'm here. Of course, I have my breakfast and my tea and everything else. Then I sit down in my comfort. Sayings of Sahru Rasulullah in his Ahlibayt and the benefits of wisdom. Let's continue. It, it might take a little longer. Please bear with it. It's a very important subject. Allah's creation, the wisdom. He says, this is the finest and there is a, 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 co a quotation reported that when I love someone, when I love someone, I perfect his aql or her aql. I will perfect it. Allah, it's a gift. Oh yes, you have aql. You read and you write and you do. But there is an element that Allah puts you into. He says, when I love somebody, when I love somebody, I perfect his or her aql. Introduction. Okay. The, if, you, if, if you go through just a scientist, just a scientist who are studying wisdom, and nothing to do with religion, they're amazed. Non-Muslims are amazed, the his, his scientists. The purpose of creation, definition given by the dictionary as well as those given by the scientists and researchers is presented here. Pay attention, how the difference is very little but very deep. When you get the explanation from Islam, it's very deep. When you get it from an English dictionary or Christianity, it does not have the depth. It does not have the soul that Islam has. Okay. The Quran describes it as a special gift. Remember now, when you say you have wisdom, it has to have a, a, an organ. Which organ? Hand? Legs? Feet? No. Where? Up here? Yes. Akal, akal, akal. And you, you see this ayah, and we can go and talk about this ayah. He says, Allah said, I decide to whom I'm going to give wisdom. I decide. You can have wisdom all you want. You think, you read tons and tons of books and whatever you did, you're a Hafiz of Quran and so forth and so on. But that special gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was given to whom? Luqman. He chose, Allah chose Luqman. Luqman, I give you hikmah. Ibrahim was given hikmah. Nu was given hikmah. Go to Quran, I'll, I'll talk about all of them. 
he grants wisdom to whomsoever he wills. He says, I have given you the capacity, you earn it. I've given you thinking. I've given you the brain, given you the heart, given you the life, giving everything. You can read, you can write, you can do all those things. Come to me. Wisdom means intellectual power and ability to apply reason, but also it implies a spiritual perception and command over divine guidance as bestowed by the grace of Allah to make right use of knowledge and occasions. That's the quality of a masoom. Namaskar all the time because he no imam had ever seen they were 24 7 in connection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taskurani askurukum always always so we have to go back all of us little by little by little this dham gives permission to understand the ocean of wisdom to those actively seek I'm, I'm sorry this has not come out very good but hopefully the next one will be this is really a presentation on the word wisdom and okay here we go why did he call himself Hakim after 99 names Al Hakim Al Hakim Al Hakim don't go running after the Ayatollah Google everybody is tied up to their cell phone Ayatollah Google everything Ayatollah Google Ayatollah Google Ayatollah Google no go to Quran Quran is the word of Hakim According to the Quran, wisdom is of greatest value for a human being. I wish I get a little bit of it. Because too much I cannot handle. Allah looks at the capacity of each container. We are containers, our mental capacity. You expand, he'll give you more. You contract, you lose. It's up to you. Take whatever you want. You want to expand your mental capacity? Two things you do. Read and write. Read and write. Search, 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 search. Ask me, ask me means search for me, search for me, search for me, call me. Not just when you come here, when you're walking, when you're driving, no matter, it doesn't matter. Ya Allah, help me out. And he will, he's listening. So this verse I have repeated again and again and again, I'll continue with that. This is the greatest gift for us that we can have. I'm fortunate even just to know the introduction to this. Okay, presentation of hikmah. The subject is very vast, as I said. Believe me, it's very vast, I said that. Very vast. For me, I can, just introduction will take long time. It has taken me months to look at every ayah of hikmah, try to understand and group them, and group them, and group them. And there is more, and there is more, and there is more. An introduction to the amazing gift to all of us. Marifat al-Hikmah. Does everybody has Marifat al-Hikmah? If somebody were to ask me, do you have Marifat al-Hikmah? No, I don't. Which Hikmah the Quran is talking about? I'm very wise. I know how to drive. I know how to deal my dealing, banking, and all the rest of the deal. Worldly affairs, I'm very sharp. I'm very sharp. I'm supposedly sharp. I know the mortgage payments. I know this and I know this thing. Everything worldly, I'm deeply rooted into it, except what the word hikmah means here. A wise person combines knowledge with understanding and puts them to work in a particular way. It's to use what you have of knowledge. What you're gonna two people giving the same thing. Different results. Wisdom is more valuable than gold. Are the there are only three ladies, I hope they're listening. Well, you know, I mean, my daughter loves gold. <laughs> my wife, late wife used to love gold. I mean, it's natural. That's okay. There's nothing wrong being loving the gold. But don't love gold more than wisdom. Keep the gold and also the wisdom. Double, double, you win both. It's yeah. to both. Uh, you get both. <laughs> They think about today, tomorrow, but consider the long-range results of the decision made in life. It's a very important long-term decision. I, today, I get very amused. I meet my friends in North Carolina, a big community. There's a lot of young people, my friends' kids. One of them is about, I think, 13, 14 year old. And I said, his name is, I think, Askari. I said, Askari, oh, today's occasion. What do you want to become? Oh, 
I mean, the way he talked, I was totally amazed, you know. He says, well, you know, I'm going to do high school and then I'm going to do some college, then I'll go into business and I'll become a millionaire. 14-year-old. He's very sharp, but all fit dunia. The boy thinks all it matters is as more money, wow, you know, like mula in the bank. The more you have, better car, better this, better this, better this. I have a friend from Oman, Muscat. His older brother was the first minister of health of Oman. And he is about seven, eight years older than me. Very handsome doctor. And he's worth $100 million. Last time I spoke to my friend, that man has Alzheimer, cannot remember anything at all. He has to be managed 24-7. Think of it. He didn't remember. Uh, my friend was telling me, he said, I told my brother, I said, ask him, how's your white Mercedes when you have millionaires, you know? He said, what Mercedes? I don't have any money. He said, you have it. He said, I don't have it. So he calls his driver. He said, do I have a white Mercedes? Of course, sir, you have a white Mercedes. The man doesn't even know. This is how it's going to end up, please. Talat Allah Muhammad Muhammad. Okay, definition. This is all dictionary. The ability to discern inner qualities and relationships. Did as if everybody know that? I have an inner self. Allah is talking to the inner self. Inner self. You understand. And that's what Quran says. These eyes are not blind. Eyes of the heart are blind. Eyes in the heart are blind. Allah wants you to open those, high, those eyes. Inside, good sense, judgment. This is all dictionary. Ability to reach intelligent conclusions, reliability, and on and on and on and on. This is all from Webster Dictionary. This is very authentic, right? Webster, Medium Dictionary. This is dictionary. Now let's go to a little more. Creation, general meaning of wisdom. The ability to use your knowledge and experience to make good decisions and judgment. It's simple. Once you have an accident, it's recorded. Are you over speeding, or you are napping, or you are on the cell? Something has to happen, or somebody hits you. That means you, you learn. That means each experience, each day you have, if you connect it to Quran and Muhammad and Ahl Bayt and Muhammad, you'll be on the right track. There's no other way, better way. Okay, so, ability to use knowledge and experience, ability to discern inner qualities. Does, does everybody know their inner qualities? I don't. How many of you know your inner qualities? How many? Inner qualities that Allah has put into you. I don't know. I'm being very frank. Should I know? Yes. How would I know? Look at the Quran. Look at the Muhammad and Ahl Bayt Muhammad. That's the only way my inside will wake up. It's asleep. It's dormant. Typically, they say that a, a, an average person's brain is used 5-6% maximum. And no more than that, 5, 6, 7, 8%. That means I have a room with 100 rooms, brain with 100 rooms, only 5 has light, the rest are dark. 90, 93, 94% are dark. I should put some light in there. Good sense, wise attitude, Teaching of wise men. Wisdom is found in and with God. This is our faith. We go to Hakim. No matter how learned you are, you can stacks of books. I met many learned people. I met a uh, neurosurgeon. A neurosurgeon. I mean, as soon as you talk about neurosurgery, you, you sort of say, oh my God, this guy, you know, fixes the brains. Top of the line, you know, I mean, you know, neurosurgery. It's not a joke. And I went to a party. By the end of the party, he was lying on the couch talking to me, lamenting. He says, my wife doesn't respect me. My kids don't trust me. No. And people think that I can just open the head and put a new brain in there. I wish I can do it to myself. We in the human world have got various gauges. These gauges are not Islamic gauges. What Allah gave to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad will last forever. Think of it.
it right all the time we find true wisdom on the basis of our relationship with god always remember that without hakim you cannot be wise without hakim you can be wise we find true wisdom by humbly submitting when you submit believe me he is saying i'll give you if it is hunger accept it if it is wealth accept it if it is four wives accept it oh, i don't mean seriously you know i i i i don't i mean this is just a statement so he commands okay let's go general meaning character four characteristic described by bible christian bible now think of it this is all general science dictionary christian bible i haven't even come to islam yet humble wise people don't constantly brag or boast display or prideful attitude oh my god when i wear a new suit everybody everybody should notice it you know i, I mean you know it's just it's one of those human weaknesses i mean why would you wear the finest of suit when nobody is looking at you so uh, never mind i'll just wear my pajama or boxer shorts but it is inside of our fitra allah is saying know it control it know it control it know it control it it will come iblis will bring it to you number 2 good deeds wise people live an upright and moral life gentle wise people treat others with care and respect that's what the character of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam gentleness with everyone with everyone with everyone number 4 consider it wise people put the needs of others ahead of themselves whenever possible do i do it no i i'm just in a rush i don't care if this person wants to i said i just have to you know push the gas and i want to just get away who cares where you want to go typically we live in a very very difficult times all of us very difficult times but as soon as you call on the hakim ya hakim ya hakim, ya hakim he he puts a little thing to listen Number five, peace loving. Wise people don't foster division. This is very important. And Muslim <laughs> ummah is divided everywhere, whether it's Sunni, Shia. Shia. I hear these things and they disturb me. In India, my wife's family is there. We send them money. They have what they call uh, homeless seniors. There are, you know, their population is over a billion. There are a lot of a lot of retirees and Muslim, non-Muslim, Muslim particularly, and so they have a lot of seniors, homeless. homeless seniors they don't have a meal to meal so they have set up this big center to so give them food they 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 it's it's it's, it's amazing to me I, you know i i look at that and i said wow wow he was telling me this man whom i contact he said i go this month and it ironic that this rabil awwal muslim shia sunnis have more celebrations more celebration I know that for sure. In Pakistan, everywhere, Maulud al-Nabi, they have very, very big calendar. Maulud al-Nabi, they will have it. Sirat al-Nabi, Maulud al-Nabi. Well, we pay a little respect and we move on. No, no. So he was telling me. He says he went. He said, "Where were you? I couldn't get hold of you." He says, "I was in the masjid. You know, we were doing Sirat al-Nabi." I said, "Allahu Akbar." They have already started first of Rabi'ul Awal. This month of Rasulullah, they have already started. and then as they were doing he says we had some trouble what happened uh, you know deobandis anybody heard of deobandis deobandis is a faction of, in 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 part of india they started they the extremists beyond the, uh, the beyond the you know afghanis beyond the uh, abdul wahab wahhabism extremist so they want to control the sunni mosques so he went there and this man comes up He says, "What are you celebrating Muhammad's birthday for?" His parents were not Muslim. All stuff for Allah Rabbi wa Taala. Can you believe people are see, they don't have a knowledge of zero, and yet they say Rasul's parents were not Muslim? Anybody has any doubt about Rasul's parents? The whole ancestors. The whole ancestors. Quran testifies. Here are Muslims saying Rasul's parents were not Muslim. They're so far away. Instead, they work to. Okay, number six, merciful, wise people demonstrate compassion. Please be compassionate to each other. Forgiveness and kindness to others 
sincere. I'll talk about this ikhlas. I went through ikhlas all through Quran. What is the quality of ikhlas in Quran? Number eight, impartial. Wise people are fair and just. This is very important. I will always lean towards my daughter or the son or my grandchildren versus anybody else, even if though it be unfair. I let go of Adil at that point, and that's not right. I should move back. I should move back. They do not show partiality to others for their own benefit. How many can read this? Come on, somebody read this to me. Okay, uh, say the bus, read this and tell me. Based on this test, do you consider yourself to be wise? What do you think? Tell me. To be wise, are you wise? The question is asked. You want to say something, Huda? No? Okay. You, you know everything. Ali will say something here on your behalf. Do you consider yourself wise? Anybody here? I don't. I'm very frank. I'm not wise in the words of Quran. I, I may be straight smart. I'm not wise according to Quran. And that's where this is asking us question. That knowing this list, do you think you're wise? I'm not. I don't know about anybody else here. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Youth, now, everybody here is youth. You know why? Because Imam Sadiq Allah said, you don't know something, you are a youth. Always remember that. I don't know Farsi. I don't know Chinese. So if I have to learn that, I have to go to preschool, grade one. Youth is when you don't know anything, you have to begin learning. Youth is in the age, yes. But youth in learning is very different. When you don't know something, you are a youth. Very simple. And this is the... Shall I go on? I think everybody is falling asleep now. No. Give me a loud salawat then. <laughs> okay. Knowledge or learning gained over time. Please take this for your children. All of you. And for yourself. I remind myself. Good sense. How do you define good sense? Anybody? You cannot. I will do so many things that are against the principles of Islam, thinking that, well, I'm a Muslim, you know, I mean, I can talk a few ayahs and I can do this, I can do this. But big picture inside has to change. And it's very important. Good sense. And, you know, there's a gap, communication gap between parents today and the children. It's very difficult today. Parents always say, why can't my children understand that? And children are saying, you're in the old age. You're in the old age. I relate, I have four grandchildren. I talk to them as though I want to learn from them. And I mean it. There is some quality, masoom, you know, they're, they're young. There's something in them that I can spark me in there. It is, it is important that we develop this communication system. Three, a wise attitude, believe a course of action. These are the youth. Take it for your children. Wisdom is also defined as the understanding of the deep nature of reality and people. Where is the reality? The, who, okay, any, all of us here, if you have to search for reality, where would you search? Anyone? How about you, Ali? Where would you search for reality for yourself? Quran, Quran and where? Okay, so you could read. Huh? No. <laughs> No, I'm not, I'm not going to be there. Inside you. You change the inside, Allah says, I'll change the outside. And that's the we struggle. Because inside said, oh, you already know so much. The inside is where you wasf sufi sudur in nas. Iblis. There are two. One is the angel, one is Iblis inside your heart. And we tend to go more to the left than to the right. Because he's very strong, very clever. Extremely clever. Very, very clever. Okay, so practical wisdom is associated with making good decisions or doing the right thing. We are not living in their world. Okay? My granddaughter tells me, Jaddo, I know what I'm doing. And you know what? As Whatever it is, I still have to respect that. Because she is American, brought up in the system, grew up in the school, knows the career, knows everything, yet 
they need help. But you have to keep the door open. You keep the door open, they'll walk one way, one day or the other. If you force them, they'll shut the door on you. They will shut the door on you. Believe me, they're very clever. Young people are extremely clever. They can read you, 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 all of us. We cannot understand them. We say, why don't they understand? And you know what they're saying? Why can't my dad understand? Why can't my mom understand? Okay. These, take these three things. Practical wisdom is doing the right thing at the right time for the right reasons. This is simplest edu- right thing at the right time for the right reasons. That's sim- simple. And that's what Allah gave to whom? To Luqman. I gave you this. And you see, read the whole story, inshallah, in future when I get a chance, continue on the hikmah from the Quran, the stories from Quran, I'll be able to relate his whole story. Beautiful story, beautiful lesson drawn from him and his, fa- his son. Why did Allah say, I gave Luqman hikmah? There's something for us to learn. But you know what? We don't care about Luqman and Isa and Musa. And we just call you know, Ali and Hassan and Hussein and we just go. No. Okay, the last one. Salatu ala Muhammad ala Muhammad. Okay, I know you're tired, you're hungry. Islam's doctrine will be in the next part, Hikmah. There will be three parts to it. One, the meaning by the Quran, verses of the Quran. Every word uses the Hikmah. It's a beautiful, we are so fortunate to have that treasure in our houses and sitting there on the shelves. Then you have these meaning from Rasulullah, the practicality of it how to put it into practice. And then you have other prominent Muslim scholars that have done this thing for us. Now, I'm going to finish here. I'd like to ask all of you to please, if you have any question on the presentation, ask me. I have said, I'm going to suggest you, Sid Abbas and Abu Ali and Hassan, take, I've given him the, this whole presentation and I suggested that he should put it on the website accessible to everybody. Okay, so instead of getting individual copies of it, which will be available with, uh, you know, somebody here, with Hassan, but more important, it's going to be posted so that you can access it at your leisure. Whenever you want to go to it, you can go to it, read it, benefit from it, and pray for all of us. Okay, now this is the last slide. Greatest divine asset and emphasizes my youth al hikmah. How can you describe this word when Allah is saying, please, please, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wisdom is bounteous thing that is invaluable and that reminds us in the Quran. Wisdom is the reception of what? Can anybody tell me? Uh, uh, Ali, don't look at Google. Salat ala Muhammad. He's, he's looking Google. Yeah. Look at that. First thing I ask question, he goes to Google. See how it works? That's second brain. Truth. Muhammad is haq. Ali is haq. Hassan is haq. Hussain is haq. This is Maasumin al haq. Namaskari is haq. Or we have to search that haq. That's wisdom. And then what? Basira. I have haq, but I don't, I don't have the basira. My inside tube light is gone. I have to buy a new bulb. Go to uh, Office Depot or Home Depot. All right. They don't have this kind of bulb that I need. Sorry, we cannot help you. Close for huh? Close for there you go. <laughs> okay. And lastly, I keep saying lastly. Okay, this, this really is the last one. Wisdom is a hidden power of thinking and logic. It's free gift to you. It, uh, it discovers unknown realities from the known ones. Take these words, they are gem. Wisdom makes logical rules using plausible reasoning by induction and deduction. Those are the two scientific, you, in, you do induce or, in, or deduce. 
Wisdom then reaches useful conclusions and results based on these logical rules. Quran has put a great amount of emphasis on applying wisdom in all matters. Don't consider it's too small or too big. No. 24-7, you live under Hakim. Okay. Gaining, okay, there are eight points to look at. Here we go. Number one, take this from here. Gaining the knowledge about God is wisdom. Life after that, thinking about life after that is wisdom. Interpreting history. I'm going more and more and more into history. And I love it because there are wise people. Luqman the wise, then Zulkarnain. You read the story of Zulkarnain. Musa and his teacher. They're full of wisdom. Relationships, knowing good and evil, justice and injustice, freedom and oppression, nature of this world. Moral and immoral, and then lastly, and the purpose of this life. Please, the purpose of this life is to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all. Search for him, search for him, search for him. Be relentless. And that's your key. Your closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will determine your next life. And that's why wisdom is known as hujjat al and, and that's why Allah is going to, why, why would Allah give us akal? We can make us a tree or animals or birds. He gave you akal. Did I use it properly? No. Would I like to use it properly? Yes. I should race, race through it. And that's the hujja. Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave this here. Maybe we can talk about it later on. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع لليم اللهم إني أسألك بحق محمد على محمد عليك سل على محمد على محمد وجعل النور في بصري وبصيرة في ديني واليقين في قلبي وإخلاص في أملي والسلامة في نفسي والسعة في رزقي والشكر لك أبدا ما أبقيتني والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This presentation he has a copy Okay, Hassan has a copy. Yeah, Hassan has a copy. Okay, so.